Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, the 2022 Solar Objections Throwdown. I'm Kelly Pickerel, editor with Solar Power World, and we have a really fun and interactive webinar today, so we're going to jump in pretty quickly. Today, we will hear from James, Ashley, Joe, and Rich, and learn how to tackle difficult objections from homeowners during the solar sales process. And now I will turn things over to Bogdan with Aurora Solar to get started. Awesome. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, welcome, everyone, to our Solar Objections Throwdown uh, number two. Um, my name is Bogdan Zlatkov. I'm the Senior Content Marketing Manager here at Aurora Solar. So the way that the Objections Throwdown will work is we're going to have four rounds uh, plus one wild card round where we have a wild card question. And then each contestant will have two minutes to answer. I'll be keeping a timer, and I will cut them off after two minutes. So make sure you guys don't go over so I don't have to be the bad guy. Uh, the audience, that's you guys, will get to vote on who answered it best. So after every objection, we are going to have a poll show up. Um, make sure that you vote in the poll, not in the Q&A window, uh, and vote for who you thought answered it best. The contestant with the most points will win our grand prize, which this year is going to be a $250 Amazon gift card, which should be a nice thing to get people set for the holiday shopping. Um, and they will also be crowned the Objection Master. Uh, if you guys have any questions at the end, you can drop them in the Q&A. So say you have a question about an objection that we were talking about, or you want a different objection answered, um, drop them in the Q&A box, and we will get to them at the end if we have time. So with that, I'd like to introduce our contestants this year. We have James Ramos from Solar University, uh, Ashley Tatarsik from Urban Soul Energy, Rich McCoy from Rebus Energy, and Joe Musakil from the Solar Academy and SolarCon. So with that, let's dive into round one of the Solar Objections Throwdown. So our oh, first objection for this year <laughs> is with an uncertain economy ahead, now just doesn't feel like the right time to be spending a lot of money like this. So we'll kick it off with you first, James. How would you handle this objection? Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so yeah, I totally understand Mr. And Mrs. Smith. I mean, one thing that is certain that the rate hikes in your utility company is continuing to go up, right? We can both agree to that. And the great thing, if you qualify for solar, there's no upfront cost, unless you decide to pur purchase it cash out right. So let's go ahead and see if you qualify for the program, to see if you can get uh, qualified for a very low interest rate, and now we can go from there. Very good, I like it, short and sweet. All right, next, Ashley, how would you handle this? I completely understand. It feels really unsteady, right? With the economy, the price of gas, food, electricity, my housing, everything just goes up and up and it feels really unpredictable, right? So it sounds like you're wanting something to be stable in your bills. You want something predictable, something to lock in your rates and something to kind of stay the same so you know what it looks like. Is that sound about right? Okay. So it sounds like you know, our, our cash program isn't going to be a good fit for you because you don't want to put any money down. So why don't we look at one of our zero down solar programs to see if that might be a better fit. That way you don't have to put any money up front and we can get you a, a solar bill that's less than your electric bill and we can lock in those rates. That way it's predictable for you. It stays the same even in 5, 10, 15 or 20 years. You know what you're going to be paying so that even when the economy is uncertain, you're certain what you're going to be paying for electricity. I like it. Very well said. All right. Next up, we have Rich. <clears throat> uh, perfect, Mr. Homer. I couldn't agree more. It's super uh, just uncertain in the grocery stores. I mean, gas prices were insane this summer with so much uncertainty around the cost of everything. Wouldn't you agree that it actually makes a little bit more sense to be able to control the things that we actually can control? One of the things about your energy rates is they're always going to rise. They're always going to go up and down, right? Well, solar allows you to take control of this one variable expense, one of the biggest expenses of your home, at a time where everything else is uncertain. So if uncertainty is one of the things you're concerned about, let's go ahead and take a look at just how certain we can lock in these energy rates so that we can take one thing off of your financial plate uh, and, and put your family in a better financial situation. I like it. All right. 
And last but not least, Joe. What's up? What's up, everybody? Just want to shout out to everybody in California fighting them 3.0. Let's go, baby. Um, this answer, everybody answered it right on the dot. Um, I'm really question based, question oriented. So I, I don't like to just tell the homeowners. I want to just have them tell me. So I'll start off first relating. Like, yes, this is uncertain times. I just got a haircut. I just spent fifty dollars. Do you think it was worth fifty dollars? You like things are getting really expensive. You agree? But then I asked them, but what's their concern? What do they think is uncertain? Because every homeowner is different. Not every homeowner is like, yeah, I'm worried about, they'll tell you, oh, it's a recession. I'm worried about losing my house. I'm worried about not having a job. I'm worried about costs going up, right? Just answer that question. You know what, Mr. Homeowner, I, I really appreciate you letting me know that. One of the beautiful things about solar is that it's recession proof. I asked him a question. So with electricity, would you say that it's a necessity or a luxury? And they'll probably say necessity. Do you think your electricity rates are going to go down or go up going into the future? They'll say it's going to go up. So what's the better option when it comes to finances? A payment that's going to be lower, fixed, that's getting better and better going to the future, or a payment that's higher, going higher and higher and unstable, right? So we're actually choosing between two different ways of paying for electricity. Do you want to own it? You generate your own electricity, or do you want to rely on the utility? It's up to you. I like it. Well said. All right. So with that, who do you guys think answered it best? We're going to launch the poll here in a second, and you can vote for your favorite. All right, who do you guys think? James, Ashley, Joe, or Richard, submit your votes and uh, then we will tally them up for, oh, is the poll still up? There we go. Um, <coughs> go ahead and submit your votes. Really well said, guys. Um, I like the way that you guys uh, kind of approach this and I had a feeling that this would be the way that uh, a lot of you guys approach it, which is basically like, the economy is uncertain, but you can make certainty in your future by, uh, you know, locking in your rates. And what we found at Aurora Solar is actually a lot of homeowners don't realize that their rates are just going to keep going up and up and up um, because it's kind of one of those things that you don't look at on a on a daily basis. So you don't really notice it. Um, so really well said. We have about 44 percent of people have voted. I'll give you guys a couple more seconds before we move on to our next objection here. Only 44%. Come on, guys. It's very easy. Click on the button. <laughs> hey. Let's go, baby. There we go. I like it. Joe's trying to get all the votes here. I'm yeah, giving you a vote. I'm giving everybody up. Everybody vote. I don't care who you vote for. Just vote. <laughs> <laughs> we need to have you for the elections, Joe. <laughs> yeah, Just get up front for the picket sign out there, Joe. <laughs> All right, if you haven't voted yet, I am closing the poll. We're moving on to our next objection here. All right, so this is round number two, and we're gonna start with Ashley on this one first. So our second objection is, financing rates are just too high right now, so it doesn't look like I'll be saving much. How would you handle okay, this, first, Ashley? First off, shout out to Rich, great answer. I wanna say good job coming on today and doing that, I loved your answer. Okay. So financing rates are just too high. Totally understand that. So the Federal Reserve controls interest rates and controls all of that. So we don't have any control of when that's going to change. But here's the thing. the Unless it becomes a regular feature of monetary policy, rates aren't going to go down to what they used to be. So, you know, it is a little bit uncertain. But here's the thing we do know. Inflation's going to continue to go up. So maybe the dealer fees go down, the finance fees go down but the price of equipment goes up or the interest rates go up or the price of labor goes up. So there's a lot of uncertain factors. So if you're not in, you know, to you, you said you're not saving too much. What are you, what are you saving right now? It's, we're looking at maybe 30 bucks a month. I know it doesn't seem like a ton, but think about what that might look like in a couple of years, how that will change versus maybe hoping in a couple of years that it will, you know, go down on you, et cetera. So I totally relate to what you're saying. I like to take advantage of things right now versus later. What about you? What do you prefer to do? Awesome. Well said. All right. Next, we're going to move on to you, Rich. How would you handle this one? 
Um, awesome, perfect. Well, I would start off with agreeing with the customer. And I think this objection is very interesting. Just like most objections, uh, they can actually be avoided in the discovery process on the front end. So as all of us kind of answer these questions, I just want everyone to keep that in mind. Like a lot of these are uh, taken care of when you're doing that discovery and getting to know the customer and really trying to figure out what their needs are. And you can guide them away from a lot of these questions really before you jump into a presentation. Uh, but in a situation like this where uh, a, a customer or a homeowner is concerned about the finance rates, I'm going to agree with them. You're absolutely right. Right now, everything is super expensive. Uh, it's not just finance rates, Mr. Homeowner. It's actually inflation in general. Uh, we see that across the board with the cost of kind of everything right now, right? And one of the main things you told me was important to you uh, when we sat down at the beginning of this was not only monthly savings, but long-term savings for your family. When we took a look at your utility bills, I was super impressed that you actually had a spreadsheet and you knew exactly how much you guys were paying for every single thing. I know you're the type of person that will not take 25 years to pay this thing off. And the good news about our lenders is that there's no penalty for early payoff. We're going to be able to save you on a monthly basis as well as a long-term basis. And again, you're not going to have to deal with these tremendous finance fees because you're not going to take care of that thing for 20 to 25 years. I know you're a smart guy. I know you're the type of person that are just going to reapply those savings back to the principal and take care of this thing in a, in a, in a much faster time period and have a financial upswing uh, and come out on top of this thing. Wouldn't you agree that's a better financial decision than what you're currently doing with the utility company? Awesome. I love it. Good job. All right, next, Joe, how would you handle this one? Yes, sir. You know, for this one, I 100% agree, Rich. Like, exactly right. Like, first agree, like, yes. We're not going to lie. Oh, yeah, no, it's it's going to be super cheap. Don't worry about it. Financing rates are just high. They are high, right? But at the end of the day, when you're paying your electricity, how much interest are you paying to the utility? You're paying 100% interest to the utility, right? So what I like to do is focus on the exact options we have available to us. Whatever it is, what we have available to us. So I always like to make an analogy compared to, say, you're um, you know, living in a house. If you're going to be paying, say, $2,000 a month for rent, but to get a mortgage, it was $2,000 a month, but the interest rate was 9%, would you rather pay 100% in rent, get nothing in return, or a high interest rate, right? So really focus on the options we actually have available. This isn't going to help with you know inflation and costs going higher and higher. Now, what else is going higher and higher besides interest rates? The cost of electricity, right? So as the rates are going higher, yes, but at the same time, electricity rates are going higher, and that's not going to stop. At least this is going to be fixed. So at the end of the day, when we're choosing between the options available to us, which one would you rather have? 100% interest with the utility or a high interest rate with the, with the loan? It's up to you. I like it. Well said. All right. And last we have James. Yeah. So um, just to this question here, just to let you guys know, for me personally and all of our students at University, we don't get down to this conversation. I, I agree with Rich and um, Joe as well, because if you're having this conversation about dealer fees, then you did something to trigger the dealer fee uh, question to come up. Right. Because you re really want to get away from the dealer fee question. So I agree with Rich like you really try to steer away from this. But if you had to. If you had to answer this question because you literally kind of shot yourself in the foot, if this question comes up, uh, I would agree just like everybody else is saying. Inflation is constantly going up. Uh, but the great thing is, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, even though the, the dealer fees and the finance fees are high because of inflation that's uncontrollable, you're still saving $50, $50 a month. And the great thing is, it, you know, within 25 years, that $50 a month savings, even if the dealer fees and the financing is high, you're saving a total of $28,550 in 25 years. So at the end of the day, you still are saving a lot of money in the long run. I like it. Well said. All right. I'm going to open up the uh, poll here. Who do you guys think answered it best? And if you can't see the uh, poll, make sure that you have the slides uh, open. That's where the poll will show up for you guys. So really well said. I feel like this objection is so important nowadays especially with uncertain interest rates and the interest rates just keep rising i actually thought that someone in the audience uh had a good point uh georges curry said uh the right way to answer this question is to tell the uh, customer that financing option is linked to the fed rate so that it will come down inevitably and reduce your rates 
Um, do you guys kind of agree with that while we wait here for uh, the uh, can, I, can, I, can I chime in really quick? About sure. it really quick. For me personally, one thing, obviously, we got to finance the system, but I really, one thing that upsets me in this industry are the dealer fees, just to let everybody know, right? Because at the end of the day, the homeowner's <laughs> paying 30% for the dealer fees. And there's just going to be a point where ethically, is like, is it going to be ethically like sound to sell a solar system for a 30% dealer fee? That's just my mm-hmm. personal opinion. That's what I voice on social media. And there's something has to give. Uh, so that, that's just my personal opinion. But the only thing is, if you're having this conversation with your homeowner as far as dealer fees, like what Rich was saying, there's ways to get around this so you don't have to have this uh, unnecessarily really hard conversation. Yeah. yeah. Actually, a high interest rate and the lower dealer fee gives the homeowner more flexibility. Um, they, they can choose what they want to do afterwards. They want to change their loan, pay it off, refi, whatever it is. Things can change in the future, right? By having a, a high interest rate, lower dealer fee gives the homeowner more flexibility, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well said. I think well the other said. thing to acknowledge, too, is that that's like a solid point, George, but also we're trying to make sales now and like make obviously make a decision what's best for them in our current environment, not like what the Fed rate will do in five or six or three years, whatever it is. So I think being able to help clients transition into, you know, getting solar energy and moving towards a more renewable future for everybody here is important. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well said. Well All said. right. I'm going to, I'm going to move on here just in the interest of time <clears> around <throat> three. I will say uh, based on the first objection, Ashley, you are in the lead. But oh, Ashley. the person who's in second place is only seven votes behind out of Ooh. 200. So Who's in second place? I will not share that, but it is a very close race. So watch out. All right. Yeah. Round number three. Here we go with objection number three. So your guarantee is nice. But what if you go out of business? What if the panel is no longer made or serviceable 20 years from now? So with this one, we're going to start with you, Rich. Uh, perfect. Um, so one of the things that I'm big on is, is obviously agreeing with the customer and empathizing with the customer. I think oftentimes people try to tackle objections as a way to, to get around the customer's concerns. And that's really one of the biggest thing that can kind of separate that customer from, trust, customer from trusting you, right? So in a question uh, like this, I'm going to take their deepest fears and I'm going to say them out loud and I'm going to put them on the table. And it's going to be very scary for you guys to say that, but it's going to really bring that trust uh, between you and the customer so much stronger, right? So, <clears throat> excuse me. In this situation, I'm going to go, uh, you're absolutely right. Unfortunately, that does happen. And throughout my time and experience in solar, I have seen that happen. I have seen uh, customers and peers of mine uh, install, you know, neighborhoods and install customers and then go out of business. And then those customers actually had no one to turn to. And it sucks. So because we've seen that, my company has built world processes that ensure that if this were to happen to either us or our installers, we partner with other extended warranty options like Solar Insure to make sure that you're protected no matter what. So on top of our warranties and our extended warranties and our production guarantees, we're going to make sure that if something happens to us, that you're able to go to other installers to get service in the future. I love to say that in a perfect world, none of, nothing's going to go wrong and that your solar system is going to be perfect and that all of us are going to be in business forever. Uh, but unfortunately, unfortunate things happen. But again, we have seen that in the industry. We've paid attention to it and we've built processes around it. So if it does happen, uh, we're ready to take care of you in a, in a timely manner. Does that make sense, Mr. Homeowner? Nice. I like it. Very well said. All right. Next up, we have Joe. All right. So for this one, I usually like to start with a joke. So, you know, try to make them laugh or something like that. And I would say something like, you know what all solar consultants have in common? They all work for the best company and their company is never going to go out of business. Right. <laughs> That's agreed. Um, but for me, I have Murphy's Law. If the worst thing is going to happen, it's going to happen to me. And that's why I wanna, how I take care of my homeowners. So when I'm helping homeowners, I don't just choose any company to work with. I go through a lot of research. I look at what which company is going to be around in the future. That's one of the biggest things I want to make sure homeowners get, because one thing is having uh, a system that works right now. What happens in the future, it doesn't, right? So for me, I have a triple warranty, right? I would make sure I do research on the right installer that's going to be there in the future, big company, um, great reviews, um, <laughs> growing fast, great installs, quick installs, uh, great you know books, uh, everything you, you, you look for. And then on top of that, you have the manufacturer warranty, which is going to be there. 
And then on top of that, we're going to do an extended warranty to cover any gaps for the next 25 years. You know, at the end of the day, I still want to ask you, though, what's the biggest concern you have about a company going out of business? And then I just have them talking and kind of go back right to the overcoming that objection the same way. Thanks. Well said. All right. Next up, we have James. Yeah, I totally understand how you feel, Mr. And Mrs. Smith. I mean, nobody can ever guarantee that they'll be here forever, right? I mean, nobody has a crystal ball. And if they ever guarantee that they're going to be here that for the long haul for 25 years, I mean, that's some, someone you got to kick out of your house, right? Uh, but the great thing is it's really important to choose the right solar company like us. Uh, we have amazing reviews in Yelp and things of that nature. Uh, and the great thing is we're using Tier 1 solar panels. So at least, you know, there's a 25-year manufacturer warranty. Uh, but again, it's just one of those things that, you know, definitely do your vetting. That's why for us personally, we work with numerous installers all around the country to fight the right, find the right one for you. Because again, solar is not cookie cutter and no one can really guarantee uh, that they're going to be here for 20 years. But we are going to guarantee you that if there are any kind of issues that's going to happen to your home that we can't guarantee that we'll be, back, we'll be back to fix those problems in a timely manner. Nice. Well said. All right. And uh, Ashley. I would say, okay, I understand. So with what I'm hearing right is you're just, you're concerned that you want to make sure that somebody can service your panels. If there's any issues in the future, you know, if an inverter goes down or one of the panels isn't working properly, you just want to make sure that somebody is going to be there to cover your stuff, right? Yeah. Okay, great. I think this is a great question that you're asking. It's you know, not all warranties are created equal. And it's really smart of you to be looking more in depth and asking questions like this. So we partnered with a third party insurance company that is also backed by a third party insurance company, Zurich, that's been in business for a hundred years. So that way you have the manufacturer's warranties and you also have a solar insurer that's also backed by a third party insurance company. That way, you know that you're going to have somebody there to help you out. And then worst case scenario, let's say all of those companies go out of business. The manufacturer goes out of business, the solar insurer goes out of business, and the company backing them goes out of business as well. You're also going to be like a dealer, right? There's going to be other people that know how to handle solar edge or end phase. It's kind of like if you go to Toyota or you know any other dealership and you've got to work with them to be able to get your car fixed, even if it's not the one you bought it from. So there's still going to be somebody there. The other thing too is, is solar is super low maintenance. There's not a ton of things like a car that you need to get done. You don't need to do oil changes and all of that. So you can just say, hey, I don't, my system doesn't need much. And so we know that we've got you backed up. You don't, there's other people around that can help if need be. And then they don't need a lot of maintenance. Nice. Very well said, guys. All right. So you guys decide who answered it best. I'm going to open up the poll here. And I saw actually quite a few uh, comments coming in in the Q&A box that were interesting. Um, Dawson actually did have a question. He wanted to know, can you talk a little bit about that extended warranty more in depth? Do you guys have any um, typical things that you say about the extended warranty? For me, it's, so I use a show, solar insurer a lot. I think it's a great way to separate stuff from the competition and it really gives the homeowner peace of mind and it really covers any gaps that a homeowner can have going into the future. So it covers for um, install, I mean, for, uh, for fixing, for the uh, cost of the equipment um, and no deductibles, no copay, no surprises. I mean, it just gives a homeowner a really great experience going to the future. And they also do monitoring too, which is nice. So they yes. monitor the system. So that way, if you've got a homeowner that like, you know, isn't paying attention to their app every day or don't have an installer that pays attention to that, you've got solar insurer that's paying attention and be like, oh shoot, you know, homeowner, Mr. Smith in California's system's not working properly. You know, let's send out a tech. Mm -hmm. Well said, well said. So there's a question All about right. who's solar insurer. It's by Zurich. Um, it's one of the company that owns farmer's insurance. So. Nice. All right. So I have an update on our poll here. Uh, so Ashley, you are no longer in the lead. Oh, Richard, no. Richard has taken that spot from you. So oh. Richard is oh. in the lead. And then the person who is in second place is only 10 votes away from being in the lead. 
So Watch we have out, Richard, really, I'm coming for you. <laughs> really close, really close uh, round here. All right, let's move on to round four. Our fourth objection here is, now that the ITC is extended, why should I do this now? So we're going to start with you first, Joe. Oh, yay. So this, to me, is a celebration. Yes, the IT is extended for another 10 years. Let's go. So this objection is really the someday objection, one day. Um, and I would go back to the homer. So you agree that one day you're going solar. Oh, yeah, 100%. Definitely going on solar one day. And then I go back to then why give any more money to the utility than you have to? That money should be paying off your system and paying yourself. And I just make it simply like this. And I love to use home, renting home and ownership because that makes the most sense because usually we're talking to homeowners, right? So let's say you're living in a house that you're renting and all you had to do to, to own your home was change that rent into a mortgage. And you just signed a piece of paper, you would change that rent to a mortgage. How many months would you wait until you have that house become your own as opposed to keep renting it? If I said that more clearly, the homeowner would say, I would do it right away. That's the same exact situation in with your electricity. If you have the opportunity to stop throwing away money out the window, just like if you're renting a home, and put it towards generating your own electricity, paying off the system so it's paid off sooner, why, why wait any longer? So to me, I go back to the someday objection. If you're going to do it one day, why give any more money to utility than you have to? Well said. All right, next we have James. Awesome. Yeah. So for, really quick for this particular homeowner, uh, I honestly feel they're not 100% bought in, right? Because if they're basing their decision strictly on the ITC, knowing that it's extended for 10 years, there's other things that this homeowner may be hung up on. Because at the end of the day, yeah, if they're saving 50 bucks a month or whatnot, and they see the value of all the other values going solar, then this ITC credit is just an extra kicker, right? But I would also approach it like, hey, it sounds like you're ready to get started, right, Mr. And Mrs. Smith? And you're just concerned about the ITC because it's not going to go away for the next you know, 10 years or whatnot. But keep in mind that, you know, in 2023, the ITC credit was actually going to drop down to 22%. And in 2024, it was going to drop down to zero for residential properties. So just like the uncertainty of the world, we just never know what's going to happen next year or the following year. Since you're 100% bought into solar right now, and it sounds like you're really interested in, in seeing if your house qualifies, let's go ahead and pre-qualify you now. Let's lock everything in. And let's at least guarantee that, you, that you're that you going to qualify for the 30% federal tax credit than just, you know, basing on, on the uncertainty of next year. Because you just never know what's going to happen based on the history of the ITC tax credit. Well said. All right. Next we have Ashley. Awesome. So, yeah, it has been extended, which is really awesome. I know that everybody in the industry is really excited and it's really good news for homeowners to be able to get more money back from the federal government to help with your solar system. So that's exciting. So why now versus later? I think that it kind of comes down to your preferences and what you're looking at right now. So if you are looking into solar now and you obviously have some interest in it, so there's obviously something that's holding you back. So let's talk about that for a second. And then I would jump into, you know, the tax credits there. But the thing that we don't know that's stable is if uh, the price of equipment's going to stay the same, mm -hmm. if the interest rates are going to stay the same, if everything else is going to stay the same. The one thing we do know that is going to happen is your utility company is going to continue to raise those rates on you. And so you might as well start saving money now versus saving money in five years. If somebody came to you and said, hey, do you want to start saving $40 a month right now, would you say, no, I'd rather do it in five years? You would probably say, yes, let's start doing it now. So it makes sense that the, the tax credit's extended, and that's great, but it also makes sense to just look at going solar now versus in the future because you're going to save more money. No point of throwing away that money. Well said. All right, and last up is Rich. <laughs> Wow, really, really great answers from everyone. So I'll try to say something a little bit different, even though I think that the guys and Ashley hit, uh, hit it on the nail with this one. Um, I think in this situation, I'm really going to leverage the cost of equipment, right? So, and, and I would encourage everybody, we didn't know this thing was going to get extended, and I hope that you're not leveraging the ITC to sell solar. Like, you, you should have a stronger value proposition than that, right? But in this situation, I'm going to go perfect. Yeah, I'm super excited that this got extended. It's really going to be a great thing for our country in general to be able to help as many Americans adopt to solar over the next decade, right? 
But just because that's in place over the next decade, what's also going to happen is the demand for solar is going to go up as more states uh, mandate solar. And as the demand goes up, the price of equipment goes up. We saw last year import experts tariffs can really uh, affect the cost of equipment, put things on back order. So uh, it sounds like what we presented for you today met all of your needs and is going to be the most cost effective solution for you today. So if we wait another five years, right, this 250 bill that you have, that's just another 15 grand you're going to give to the utility company. At the same time, over the course of the next three to five years, the cost of battery equipment and installation is also going to go up. So what I would say, Mr. Homeowner, is it looks like we've met your needs today. Can you think of any reason why going solar today is not a better decision than five years from now or later down the road? Well said. Good job, everybody. All right. So I'm going to turn it over to the audience. Who do you guys think answered it best? I'm going to put up the poll here and we can get the voting started. I think that uh, this is definitely something that has both been a blessing and a curse, right? Because it used to be you could sell on urgency because it's like, oh, you don't know if the ITC is going to go away. Um, but because they extended it for so long, it's been a little bit tricky. But I think you guys handled that really well. Um, I have a little bit of a update in terms of the lead. On the last question, Ashley got 57% of the votes, which bumped her back into first place. <laughs> And oh. the person behind her is only 27 votes behind. Oh, so, Rich, you had the lead. <laughs> Ashley stole it from you. We'll see what happens this round. So cast your votes, guys. I think every single vote is uh, going to count here because it's coming down to the wire. We the have wire. one last uh, solar objection here. So uh, let me look at a question here. Uh, people really liked the answer about uh, renting versus buying. Why would you wait? Even though there isn't, you know, a uh, time crunch there in terms of uh, the tax credit. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of just uh, plus ones on what you guys said. All right, I'm gonna close the the voting here in two seconds, and we're gonna move on to our final wild card round. All right. Well, we're jumping through. All right, so we have our uh, our wild card round here. Um, this one, I think, is basically going to decide the winner because it looks like it's pretty close in terms of voting. All right, so this is our final objection. So our neighbor got solar last year and hates it. Their panels don't produce enough. Their storage hardly ever works. It seems like a huge hassle for a small savings. So the gist of this objection, so you guys know, is just someone who is just... <clears throat> upset about solar they don't believe in solar and they have this neighbor who is telling them that solar uh was a bad decision for them so i'm gonna kick it off with uh james you first awesome yeah so hey i totally understand mr and mrs smith um uh, but you know solar is not for everybody and because it's not for everybody you also need to choose the right solar company that you work with because there are a lot of solar companies out there that are misleading homeowners where they shouldn't have went solar and they end up going solar and it happens, they get screwed over or whatnot. But based on the energy savings report here, uh, you are gonna save X amount of money. You are, you are eligible for one battery storage to back up your home for your essential needs. Uh, but yeah, that's why I totally understand. That's why it's, it's important for you to do your vetting, make sure they find the right solar company. And also sometimes solar is not cookie cutter, it's not for everybody. But based on this particular energy savings report, you are going to save some money and you are eligible for a battery storage, if you please. Uh, and, you know, uh, as far as the horror stories, your neighbors, uh, unfortunately, probably wasn't, you know, the best situation for them to move forward with solar. Because, again, like I said, it's not cookie cutter and every situation is going to be different based on everyone's usage and their needs. Awesome. Well said. All right. Next, I'm going to call up Joe. All right, out of the blue, it's not even my turn, but I'll jump in. Um, so for me, uh, I definitely want to, like, I would try to dive in, but, you know, without diving into the problems, exactly what the issues were, I would really explain to the homeowner that solar is a medicine, right? And I try to have an analogy, like, let's say a doctor gave a patient the wrong medicine, and that patient was not happy with the results. They didn't help with the, actually, the issues they had, uh, gave them bad side effects. They got bumps, all, rashes all over their body. Would the problem be the doctor or the medicine? 
would probably be the doctor, right? And this is the same thing with solar. If you have a situation where your solar consultant set you up in a wrong way, you could have a bad situation. You could not have electricity or too much electricity or a tree could cover your, your panels. Or electrical can add costs that you didn't know about. A lot of things can happen. So for me, I really pride myself in my experience. I, I don't really only call myself a solar consultant. I call myself an experienced solar designer. I understand the electrical. I understand the process, steps to making sure that you get exactly what you're promised. And based on what we have here, you're actually a top prospect, meaning that you are paying so much money electricity and you have so much sun hitting your roof that actually this is going to be a, a big benefit for you. Also, I want to make sure you understand you are not my, my first homeowner of health. I've helped over 700 homeowners go solar, and I have a few in the neighborhood that I can actually uh, refer you to. You can actually ask them their experience with me and how their situation was going solar. Very well said. All right, next up, I'm calling up Ashley. Oh man, I'm I'm sorry to hear that. I've been in the industry for four years now, and I've definitely heard stories like this before. So I'm going to kind of break it down. What might be the reasons for it, if that's okay? So one of the things is, is that you probably know that solar has been around since the 1960s, but it really just started booming in the last five to seven years on the residential side due to these tax credits and availability to people. And so unfortunately with that, what happens is you get some unsavory companies that kind of come into the market and unfortunately do a couple of things. So I actually put out an ebook on this called the five red flags to look out for in the solar industry and how not to get scammed. And so what it comes down to is unfortunately, your friends probably had a company that didn't build the system correctly or didn't just talked about offset and not about production. They also probably didn't understand the net metering regulations in their area so that solar could work more efficiently for them, not oversizing a system. So what we're gonna do is we use tools like Aurora to be able to help us to accurately design a system, to be able to see how much sunlight you're gonna get with throughout the year, what your trees are gonna do on your house. And then that way we can give you a correct analysis of what type of savings you're gonna look at. And if that all looks good to you and all those numbers are straightforward and right to the point, would it make sense to at least look at a solar report to see if it you know, works in your favor? Is that okay? Well said. All right. And last we have Rich. Oh man, you guys are making it tough to, to follow these answers again. <clears throat> Uh, in a situation like this, I'm, I'm going to kind of go back to one of the things I said earlier, where I'm really going to put those worst case scenarios on the table for the customer uh, so that they don't feel like, because we're all, we're salespeople, right? They kind of expect when they throw a concern like this for us to, to kind of smooth talk our way out of it. So I don't want to do that. I'm going to say something along the lines of like, I get it. I've, unfortunately, I've heard that uh, too many times. Like how scary would that be, Mr. Homeowner, for you to spend $48,000 on a solar system and had someone sit in your living room and make promises about how it eliminate your utility bill, then not only did it not eliminate your utility bill, you're actually paying more on top of that, on top of the system not working, and the company and the sales rep are not even answering their phone after that. What a nightmare of a situation. Because these things do happen, again, my company over the years have paid attention to not only our, our, our customers, but things that go on in the industry, and we built world-class customer service processes that ensure 48 hour response time on top of our 25 year equipment and uh, workmanship warranty, as well as extended warranty. So again, in a perfect world, I love to say that these complicated electrical systems will never fail you, but unfortunately they, they do, just like our iPhones, just like our BMWs, et cetera, nothing is guaranteed to be perfect. But what I can say is our reviews and our warranties and our ratings online can guarantee or, or build that trust in us that we're going to be able to take care of you if you do have any of these situations. And that's why working with us, we're, we're not, I'm not in a rush to, to, to sign you up for solar today and install them all. We can be patient. We can look at reviews. We can talk to our other customers in the area and really take this thing. We want to make it a right fit for your family. This thing's going to power your home for 40 years. We're not in a rush. We want to make sure that we're designing the right system for you and that we're meeting your needs 10 out of 10, not 9 out of 10, because that's what we strive to do every time. How's that sound, Mr. Customer? Well so, said. A lot. All right. Good job, guys. All right. So you guys decide who answered it best. And I will say that first and second place are only split by seven votes. Ooh. So make your vote count here. Who do you guys think answered it best? 
I thought that you guys all handled that one super, super well. I actually, uh, I, I called it a wild card question, but you know what? Like you guys handled it as though it was just any other question. <laughs> so really, really well done. Um, we will jump into Q&A after this uh, voting is completed. So if you guys have any questions about uh, different objections you want to hear handled or um, if you want them to uh, talk a little bit more about a certain objection and get more clarity on it, feel free to drop them in the Q&A box. Um, but first, please do vote. So I see we have 47% of people have voted so far. If you have not voted, this could decide the winner. The winner of the $250 Amazon gift card. And it looks like uh, people who are trying to vote for me, it's not working for them. So I guess oh, oh, right. oh, sorry, Joe. Yeah. Joe, vote on everyone. Uh, can I give a shout out to Shane in the comments for his, in Texas, every homeowner has over 25 utility providers to choose from. So I, Shane, congrats, like good job on having a list like that. Texas is a crazy, crazy market to work in and knowing the utilities knowing that it's deregulated. So knowing who to tell your clients to go to, I'm like super pumped to hear people doing that stuff. So thank you for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And just to clarify, uh, Shane said that uh, he sends out a list of providers the week of the install uh, is what Ashley's referring to there. Um, so yeah, uh, really like the uh, kind of tips and the additions that you guys have added in the Q&A box. Uh, it's been really fun reading through those. All right, I'm going to give you guys three seconds to make up your mind. 55% of people have voted. We're seven votes between first and second place. And I'm closing the poll. All right, we're going to jump into Q&A here. Um, just this does not count for any votes. Uh, feel free to ask any questions in the Q&A box, and we will tally the votes behind the scenes and let you know the winner just in a few seconds here. Um, one question that I wanted to ask you guys actually is uh, someone asked, uh, how can I assure new homeowners that they don't need to wait a year to determine their solar system? So how do you guys typically pitch to new homeowners? Oh, um, I'll just I... jump in. Oh, go ahead, Ashley. No, it's okay. Go for it. Just really quick. I, I just write to my head. I go to what is going to make sense for them? And if we don't know how much electricity you're going to use, a lot of people are like, we'll measure this, we'll measure this, and we'll figure out exactly what it's going to be. You're not going to know exactly what they need. Like, it's, like, it's almost impossible, right? So I focus on the minimum, right? Like, what's the minimum you're going to need going in the first year? After the first year, then we can uh, do it, check it again, and see exactly how much you need. But at least the first year, let's get the minimum amount, and then at least get a system started. That's how we usually, I usually handle it. So I actually do exactly what Joe just said he doesn't do. So I use a load calc analysis and I ask them thorough questions. I think it's super important to like ask them about their needs. Like, are they gonna get a hot tub, a Tesla car? Like how many kids are gonna be in the house? I would rather take some science and like break it down and be like, okay, at least we have a basis for what you're gonna be using. Let's maybe even like bump it up by a thousand kilowatt hours a year if you're concerned about that. So just to be a little bit on the safe side. Yeah, some people, we're going to disagree. Okay. We're not going to have the same answer. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. I, I want to sure. piggyback, piggyback on top of that as well. So another thing, too, is also getting, like, previous history, right? So maybe the other home that they had in the yeah. past uh, is the same square footage, possibly. Uh, just like uh, what Ashley's saying, just grabbing as much data as you can to create the right system for a homeowner. And sometimes if it's completely off, like they got a – they have a 5,000 square foot home now. They got a test. They, they're probably getting a Tesla. It may be not, it may be difficult to calculate everything. So some situations, especially if they just moved in a house, like they're a month in, it may not be based on the research that you've done. And if you don't have enough data, sometimes you're going to have to walk away from it and be like, hey, you know what? You just don't have enough data. I don't want to create the wrong system for your home. Let's revisit this in a couple of months, especially during summer, like after summer. And let's see what we can do like after summer, at least, you know? Yeah, like, good job on that answer, too. Like, I would vote for you on that one, because that was good. I feel like that's the thing. Guys, like reverse it real quick, Bob, this, so she can everybody can add <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this to the question list. <laughs> no, it's good, because I think that's true. Like, we all want to sell, but the truth is, is that sometimes it's not the right time for someone to go solar, and someone's going to trust you for saying that. Like, saying, hey, right now I can't help you, but come back in two months, and let's reevaluate mm -hmm. 
have more information. Yeah. I so think I think that's one. Of, I think that's one of the biggest problems. Well, one of the problems in the industry right now uh, on the sales side, and everyone that's listening to this, you guys need to understand this, right? Because with Solar University, we literally teach thousands of students like every single year. If there's going to be points where or situations where it just makes no total sense to go solar. Mm -hmm. And because mm -hmm. you're an expert in solar, it's up to you to say, hey, you know what, Ashley uh, and John, this is not a great time right now. Let's go revisit this some other time. Because there's so many homeowners getting screwed over mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of weather misinformation. We really need to clean up this industry. This is all our livelihoods, right? So there's going to be a point because if you work on a, on a lack mindset, you want to close that right now. But if there's an abundant mindset, you have other homeowners that you can help. So don't screw over a homeowner just to get that five thousand dollars, because not mm -hmm. only does it screw you over, it screws us all over. James, bring in the fire after the contest yeah, is over. Yeah. Yeah, that's super well said, and it, it is a hundred percent something that needs to be talked about more. I think as as sales professionals, we focus so much on our closing ratio and our numbers and being number one in our office that walking away from wrong foot deals is just simply not talked about enough. We got to get away from the closing ratio and talk about how many right fit customers did I sit down with that I was able to close. Because again, probably 40% of the people that we sit with, it's not going to be the right time or they shouldn't be going solar. Their age is probably not a right fit for them if for, to take out this loan, et cetera. So I think that's a huge piece, man. I, I'm really glad you brought that up. And I think everybody should really pay attention to that. And back to the lack mindset, don't think that if you walk away from a deal that you can't go get another one. There's so many roofs out there. And when you have just the authenticity to truly serve that customer and say, hey, now's really not the right time. As a consultant, my job is to advise you the best. I don't really honestly think this is the right financial decision for you guys. But if you know anyone else who I might be able to help, I'd love to help them out. And I promise you, if you can carry yourself that way in this industry, yeah. you'll be around a long time and the money will come to you. It's not a gold rush. It's not a smash and dash, get as much as you can now, like be in it for the long haul. And that means truly taking care of a neighborhood, truly taking care of a community and being the mayor of that town. You get a lot more referrals when you have to kind of walk away from deals like that. People will call you back up. Hey man, I wasn't able to go solar, but I got this, you know, I got my, my coworker, my daughter, my, my whoever around the corner. I really like the way you helped us out, even though we couldn't do it. And I think that you should sit down with them. So uh, very well said, James. I love this group of people. What a bunch of honest, like upfront people here. That's fucking rock on, guys. And, and, and I honestly think, Ashley, like because of everyone's experience here, we have to shed the truth, right? Because there's so many glitter out there when you're getting into solar where it sounds great. And sometimes I think a lot of reps are, are not intentionally trying to hurt a homeowner or mislead a homeowner. It's just because there's just so many. There's, it's the wild, wild west out there right now. And I love the four, the three of you guys as well. It's like, you know, we're going to be real with you guys. Sometimes, like, literally, you got to get up and say this, is, this is not going to work at this point, you know? Rich can come on next year, too, Bogdan, just in case you're <laughs> I agree. I agree. It's really, really bringing a lot of, of value here. Rich, I love that you guys are still, like, you know, basically we could just keep going, solar objections throw down, like, for two, three hours. You guys wouldn't even get tired of it. Um, <laughs> I, I do have a question here that someone brought up. Uh, JJ is asking... Uh, is there a systematic way to calculate the appreciation of a property um, due to the addition of solar? Do you guys know anything about that? There, it's super hard because there's a lot of variables as part of it. You know, I, I've seen places where it says, oh, solar adds 4% to your home. That's absolutely ridiculous because that home could be in a different an area that has no net metering and how valuable is solar if there's no net metering, right? So the variables are based, a lot of it is based on the area, the utility, if they have net metering, what those rates are, um, how much, you know, how much, how much electricity, how much time is left in the warranty. So many variables to actually see how much appreciation, how much value there is in a solar system. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree 100% with Joe as well. Um, but you know, if you guys want to look into like like uh, information, like Nina Lawrence Laboratory uh, Labs wrote an article, but it's really blanket, like what Joe is saying. I mean, not everyone's going to get four percent, right? Uh, some folks may, some folks may not. You know, uh, but I I agree with you one hundred percent. Are you guys also using uh, Pearl? Pearl certificate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'll explain to everybody, Rich, what, is, what a Pearl certificate is. <laughs> Uh, so I, I'm I'm not the expert on it, but uh, from from what I gather, are, do you got do you use it? You use it often, or 
it's just a real estate agent that knows solar pretty much, right? Understands solar, how it works. And um, But go ahead, Rich. Apparently, it is one of the closest things that you can get in the industry that would uh, make visible to that appreciation of the property. But I think like most things, it's still going to be debatable at the end of the day. It's just another certification. So I wouldn't leverage it or lean on it too hard or put my own name on it. But nonetheless, it is probably a great piece of information to be able to provide to that homeowner uh, when they do have questions like that around their you know, home value and, and increase and things of that nature. So uh, nonetheless, definitely worth checking out if you guys aren't familiar with the Pearl certification. Mm -hmm. I realized I was just on mute and I was trying to talk and I was like, oh, wait, why is everyone talking over me? And then I was like, oh, wait, I'm on mute. So Tom Cotter <laughs> put a really good comment in the section. Um, he said pvvalue.com. I'm always yeah. down to hear about tools that other people are using to enhance what we're doing. Just checked it out for a second. Looks pretty good. Tom Cotter's a stand-up guy, so I'm sure he knows a great amount of that. Might be worth it for everybody to save that in their bookmarks. Mm -hmm. Well said. And then also I see here from Thomas, he's saying Zillow published a story in 2019 that broke down solar value increases by region. Um, so he says that you could Google that to uh, find that as well. Um, and then uh, Ben Perry also said uh, he has an email to send folks with multiple articles on home values with solar um, so that people can check it out. So if you find them on LinkedIn, you can probably uh, DM him to get that. Um, awesome. Uh, one question, uh, final question here before we move into results is uh, Jan is asking, what about the holidays objection? Everyone wanting to put everything off through the holiday season. Do you guys have any uh, thoughts on that? For me, really quick, is with the holidays, the hardest thing is getting an appointment. Uh, once they, once you have an appointment set with both spouses there and you have their attention and they see what their options are, the holiday doesn't matter. It's just going to help them in their their e economics, right? So really, it's hard to get make an appointment. So really focusing on how to set a really good appointment is going to be the biggest obstacle in the holidays, in my opinion. I, I agree with Joe as well, because at the end of the day, uh, homeowners use electricity year round, right? So it's not seasonal that we use electricity, uh, but it's just one of those things that, you know, we need the 12 month usage. And then from there, you can create an uh, energy saving report, whether it's summer or winter, right? But I think the obstacle, like Joe is saying, is getting that appointment, uh, because a lot of homeowners are thinking in their mind that this is going to cost me money. And I got to buy gifts and things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think that, yeah, the biggest hurdle is, is getting that lead in the wintertime. I think that if, if like, they, you say you're already in an appointment and you have that objection coming up, I think one of the things is to reassure people that mm -hmm. it's zero down. There's nothing up front for you to go solar. And you're not spending mm -hmm. anything that would take away from your holiday budget. Actually, it would make more sense to go solar December, January mm -hmm. time because then you're installed before those hot summer months and then you're building up credits, depending on the net metering, but you're building mm -hmm. up those credits so that you already have solar versus trying to get installed in December or January type of thing. So it makes more sense time-wise actually now to go solar versus in the summertime when everybody else is thinking about it. With the preface and, and well, that it, numbers make sense, of course. Mm -hmm. and, and one last thing too, is, uh, is a perfect opportunity to throw in some incentives, right? to buy gifts and things like that to get in the door. Maybe you have yeah. a $500 gift card or whatnot or $100 gift incentive or $1,000 gift incentive, whatever that may be. It's a perfect opportunity to use that incentive to get in the door. Yeah. Very well said. I love it. I feel like we already have enough to uh, do Solar Objections version 3.0. All right. So without further ado, I will uh, first like to thank all four of you guys um, for coming on. We really appreciate you guys sharing your knowledge. We, we can't do this without you guys. So thank you so much for sharing um, all the great answers. Uh, so in third and fourth place, we have Joe and James. So you guys were in the running the entire time, but then when we got to objection four and five, uh, Richard and Ashley just kind of pulled it through. So. Ooh. First place has 284 votes. Second place has 269 votes. So Ooh. very, very slim margin. Less than 20 votes separate you guys. In second place, we have Ashley. And in first place, we have the newcomer, the new kid on the block, Rich. Ooh. Well done. Ooh. 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 He lives up by his name. He's, I'm Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Rich, Rich. Yeah, Rich. 
I did it yes. for that ticket to SolarCon that Joe promised me before we started. So I just want to remind everybody. Go to SolarCon. <laughs> very well, very well done, Rich. I love that you came in swinging. And uh, Ashley, you and Rich, basically every round, we're going back and forth in terms of like seven votes to Ashley, seven votes to Rich. So uh, really well done, guys. Um, all right, I will uh, turn it over to Kelly to take us out of the webinar. But just so you guys know, the follow-up email that we're going to be sharing um, is going to have our Solar Objections playbook, which basically includes a bunch of answers to all the Solar Objections uh, that we covered last year. So be on the lookout for that in the follow-up email. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to Kelly. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, thanks, Bogdan. And, and thank you so much for sponsoring, for Aurora, for sponsoring this really cool webinar today. And yeah, everything will be sent to registrants afterwards. So thank you for joining us today and hope to see you all at more Solar Power World webinars in the future. Thanks. See you at SolarCon. Later, guys. Awesome. Can we uh, can we at least like, so if anybody wants to connect with us or anything, is there a good way to put out our info? Just a question. We can, yeah. So um, you can put out your info. Um, I think the best way will probably be for people to just reach out on LinkedIn um, because they do have your first last name uh, in the registrant emails. But we can also send out uh, a email after this with your contact info if you want to give your email info out as well. Cool. Thanks, guys. This was awesome. awesome. Good job, Rich. You. I knew you Thank were going to win. Good job, everyone. You guys are the best. Yeah. Good job, guys. Fun.